Hey, hello and welcome to the market update for Tuesday, July the 13th. Uh, seeing the markets kind of pause a little bit today after running up the last uh, couple trading sessions, we had a, a pretty big uh, reversal day, bullish reversal day uh, last Friday. The breadth started to in increase um, uh, pretty dramatically, which is something we we were talking about last week, and and um, was was probably one of the reasons that that led to a little bit of the sell off last week. Um, but Yesterday, the breadth was back to being, uh, you know, kind of negative or, or flat. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens here. We'll talk about kind of my expectations here um, based on what the charts look like. We'll talk about that when we get to the actual charts. We start looking at the charts here. But as far as the direction alerts here first, um, not much has changed. We're, we're still in kind of the extreme area on momentum and sentiment. Uh, but the breadth is still kind of lagging a little bit. It did pick up a little bit. Um, uh, it was it was close to getting to the high range, um, but then it the lot like I said yesterday's breadth was was uh, <clears throat> a little negative, and so it it kind of backed off a little bit there. But it's lagging. I, I still would expect uh, that we'd see the breadth get see all three indicators get into the extreme range before. Uh, start talking about a more dramatic sell-off or a bigger sell-off uh, but that doesn't necessarily have to happen and and uh, there could be other clues that we see indicating that uh, the market could drop that we you know we'd have to pay attention to and that that could warn us that it may happen sooner we do expect that we're in the later stages of the trend i've talked about this number of times over the last few weeks uh, remember you can be in a in a in the later stages of a trend for a little while so it's not like we're expecting the market to to just uh turn around sell off immediately or anything like that just because we're in that but it's it's important to understand that uh, from a uh, for for making trading decisions you don't want to be um you don't want to be overly aggressive in these conditions um uh, you, you, it's it's a good idea to trade a little bit less, uh, keep a little bit more money on the sidelines, because if you do have that bigger sell, remember stocks always fall a lot faster than they rise, and and you, you know this run up that we've had um, recently could get wiped out. You know you could have three or four weeks of a run up wiped out in one or two days. So um, you know that it, it, if you if you're thinking to yourself that uh, oh well I, I'm gonna I'm going to get out when it starts to look like the market's going to sell off and, and um, like you'll have a chance to, to really be able to, to, to uh, uh, see that the market's selling off before you get out. Chances are that uh, by the time you see that, by the time it looks, the market looks pretty negative, you know, like I said, you probably wiped out a, a few weeks of, uh, of the rally, a few weeks of profit. So um, when you get to these later stages, what you start, to to think about is you know obviously you're always fighting the the emotions of fear and greed um you want you've made some good money on the run up you want to make more and you and you want to you know you just want to always make money that's what every trader wants to do they don't want to ever lose money they just want to make money but uh, when you get into those later stages you have to ask yourself is the risk of of additional gains worth uh or the reward of those additional gains worth the risk that you could wipe out the last two months in in one week or something like that. You know, um, it, it, trying to grab that extra dollar it, when there's a chance you could lose ten in, uh, immediately or really quickly. Uh, you know, you you have to start to think like that when you get into these these uh, extended markets and in later stages within the trend. You. Um, th that's why it's a good idea to start to reduce risk. Do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. Everyone else is is, is thinking that that uh, you know the market's going to go up forever. There's no way they could lose money. You know all those 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 emotions that that start to show up at a market top. Um, you're you're trying to do the opposite, and it and it takes effort. It takes you have to kind of force yourself to to not buy into the hype sometimes that that, that gets going. Um, now, on the flip side of that, I'm not suggesting that um, 
we try to pick trend reversals. I'm not saying that we're going to go immediately short the market because I don't see anything right now indicating that the market's going to go down. Uh, I'm just recognizing that we're in these later stages of the trend, and um, and we should start to see we should start to see the emotions pick up to where the market becomes. Um, kind of hyper bullish, so to speak. And and we're not seeing that. And we're definitely not seeing that in the breadth right here. You you want to see the breadth uh, start to move into that extreme range. Um, it, it, we'd like to see everything move into this extreme range that would indicate that uh, that everyone's just, just uh, buying, buying, buying. And that would be kind of that final recognition that a bigger correction is, is about to happen. Sentiment, like I said, has been in the extreme range, kind of back and forth within that extreme range. Um, the buy sell ratios are not showing any uh, extreme. We, they did you know, did get the sales that moved moved up a little bit over the buys, but they're starting to come close together here. Um, sentiment is still kind of elevated right there. We're still kind of uh, right along that that red line there. Um, that could mean we get smaller pullbacks in the near term. We're seeing a little bit of a smaller pullback today. You know, it's possible it could last a couple of days. Um, and so we'll see, um, we'll see how that kind of plays out. Uh, now, um, let's see, let's go back to. Oh, I want to go. I want to take a look at the indexes here. You know, one thing I keep pointing out: we don't look at this all the time, but one thing that uh, that you want to be aware of is uh, that uh, you you don't want that ratio. If the ratio starts to get into double digits, um, then you know where where you've got uh, you know twelve to one buys versus sells. Um, that's a, a that's showing you that you're in an area of being extreme. Again, we're not there yet, um, but uh, that's something. It, some of these are starting to creep up a little bit. The Dow Industrials are at three to one. That's still pretty low, but that's something to, to kind of keep an eye on as well um, and see if those start to get extreme. Now let's get to the charts here. Hold on just a second. Just checking something here real quick. Sorry, I feel a little bit of delay here. All right. Um, all right. On the SPY, we've already we're already at new all time highs. We seem to be hitting new all time highs every day. Um, we're not, uh, you know, we are in the extreme uh, overbought area, but we're not to the right side of that extreme range. So, um, you know, we're still, there's still some room for it to, to keep moving higher. But like I said, it's, it's, it, we're kind of in that later stage. Now, one of the things that, that concerned me last week and with frankly for the last couple of pullbacks is I want to see a deeper pullback. And I know that uh, when you're, when you have long positions, you don't want to see the market pull back. You only want to see the market pull back when you're out of the market so that it pulls back and you get you get better entry points. Um, but when the market starts to get extended like this, I, I'd like to see a bigger pullback because uh, that's when you can have the chance of a bigger run up. Um, as long as you get these shallow pullbacks, what, what will tend to happen is you'll just kind of start to stagnate a little bit, kind of like what happened back here. Where we kind of we we had just kind of a shallow pullback right here, we broke out, but then we just kind of moved 
kind of sideways. And, and again, sideways movement is the worst. Um, it, it um, you know, it, I've mentioned this many times. I don't care where the what direction the market goes in. I can make money in any direction, but I want it to move. When it moves sideways, but, uh, now you can make money in a sideways market um, with different strategies, particularly options, different options, spreads, and things like that. But even with those, I found over the years that I end up working twice as hard for half as much money. And so uh, even though I can make money in a sideways market, like I said, I don't want to work twice as hard for half as much. So I want I want movement. And um, and that's and, and, you know, those sideways moves don't um, don't really help with that. So um, I think we'll see a lot of that um, kind of stagnation there um, until we get a deeper pullback. Because remember what the, the pullback does is it puts things on sale it brings the prices down and it attracts buyers uh, when that happens and more aggressive buying takes place when that happens with these shallow pullbacks yes it gives people a chance to buy the dip but then you know it's it's right back up to a higher price again and you're not willing to buy more so you're buying a little bit but you're not buying more you're not being aggressive with your buying with just these little shallow um, pullbacks um, but again as far as the trend the trend is still up um, we are starting to recognize, though, it's getting a little stretched. Um, and as far as all the other, you know, the, the other indexes are concerned, the Dow is just barely starting to break out again. It hasn't uh, moved above its its intraday high from from back here. That was on uh, May the 10th, the intraday high there. But it did have a new closing high yesterday. Um, it's a close to the new all-time high, um, but we, we're still in kind of the sideways range. I would expect that we're going to see the Dow break out, clearly break out of that range. So I do expect a little more upside um, in the Dow over the next few days, at least. The Nasdaq 100 is also, and you know, from a indicator standpoint here, we're not in the extreme range yet on the Dow. On the Nasdaq 100. Um, this is, is <clears throat> excuse me, is um, getting a little stretch. It's it's hitting new. In fact, if it closes uh, where it's at right now, to be new all time high, it's not in the extreme reversal risk area yet. So there's still a little bit more room for it to to go up. One that's really lagging though is the Russell 2000. It's down today, down almost one and a half percent. Um, this is quite a ways away from from its all-time high and this is something to pay attention to because uh, <clears throat> the the Russell 2000 tends to be a little bit of a leading indicator uh, of the market um, meaning that it it tends to lead the other indexes when the when the trend is moving higher and the small caps are participating uh, it, it, usually you'll see the the, the Nasdaq Dow and S&P follow um, So in a situation like this, either the Russell is lagging the other indexes and it's going to catch up to them and break out to new all-time highs, which is definitely a possibility, particularly since the 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 um, we're not seeing a lot of, of overbought conditions yet, or the Russell is leading the way down, that it's starting its bigger correction, the bigger correction, and we'll start to see the other indexes follow. Um, now I'm still kind of mixed on this. Just I would I'd be really convinced of that if we were um, really in an overbought condition and we're starting to see the Russell start to slide. If if all those indicators were in that extreme condition, no extreme overbought condition, um, I'd really buy into the fact that I felt that I would feel like the Russell is leading the way down. But because we're not there yet. Um, like I said, I still think there's some upside uh, in the near term. I just don't think the Russell though is going to break out. So it could be that we see the Russell rally strongly for a few days or so, and that puts the rest of the market in that extreme range. Maybe we get up close to breaking out. And if that happens and then it rolls over, then you really you really have to assume that, uh, that we've got a bigger correction underway at that point. Okay, now I'm talking about things that could down the road we'll be looking at and it, this all could change too. I could, again, my job is not to be a market, a market, market psychic. There's a tongue twister for me. 
uh, but to be a forecaster and obviously for forecasting there's conditions that change and inputs that change that um, and you've got to change with it when that happens but um, this is something I'm keeping an eye on I'm sure I'll, I'll talk about in other updates uh, and, and we'll see how it kind of plays out but as of right now again you're you're seeing um, the other indexes uh, moving higher and yet you're seeing a lot of weakness on these small cap stocks and I think this is also affecting the the market breadth too, because you've got what's happening is is you're getting a lot of the larger companies that are leading the rally. Um, there's not a broad based participation, and um, and remember, in a strong trend, when you're in the strongest part of your uptrend, one of the signals of that is is broad participation. A lot of stocks are are participating. Now, this is also something I've talked about a number of times over the last few weeks. The, the problem when there's low breadth is that you, you have to be more precise in the trades you're getting into. You have, instead of, you know, instead of, uh, you know, you might not pick the, the, the strongest company, but if, if everything's going up together, you're still going to make money because that stock's going to go up along with, with everything else because everything's going up. You know, you, you've got... You got 3,000 stocks that are going up on, on a single day, or something like that. Well, if you only have 100 stocks that are going up for the for that for that day, um, well, what are your chances of of getting one of those 100 stocks? You know, the, the, you might be in in a stock that is, has a nice uptrend, but it's down for the day because it wasn't one of those 100 stocks that's up for the day. So your chances of making money gets diminished because you've got to you've got to pick the right right stocks. Now, we do all we can to try to pick the right stocks, and all the stuff we, we talk about in these classes is, is geared towards giving you that edge and picking right stocks, but it helps when you have that breadth behind you as well. You don't have to be as precise, um, you know, and, and and that's, and like I said, that's what happens in the later stages of these trends is that there's fewer and fewer stocks that are driving things up, so everything looks healthy. Everything looks fine on the surface, but underneath, it's warning you that, hey, this thing is reversing. These other stocks have already started to reverse, and um, it's only a matter of time before those those leadership stocks roll over, and then and then it really collapses quickly when that happens. So that's what we're trying to keep an eye on right now is are we seeing some of that subtle shift taking place? And um, it's kind of looking like it right now with the, the Russell um, drastically underperforming the other indexes. All right. Um, another thing that the market's really keeping an eye on right now is the bond market. You've heard a, a lot of focus on bond yields and bond yields going up and down. And, and lately, bond yields have been coming down, which doesn't seem to make a lot of sense because typically those yields are going to go up when inflation is is in the market. We're seeing a lot of inflationary signs out there. Um, but uh, there's a lot of expectation that that uh, those bond yields are going to go higher again. And one thing we've been, you know, as far as the trend, though, of the TLT, it's been trending up. Um, we talked about just the higher highs, higher lows. So we're still going to be focusing on that. And recently we had this breakout higher and we started to pull back a little bit right here. Now, this could be just another one of these pullbacks, and if it starts to move back up again, that could be a higher low, and it could be confirming that uptrend. Um, the key spots to keep an eye on are going to be this high up here. If it breaks above that, that's a higher high. If it breaks below this low down here in around 141, that would be going to a lower low. It hasn't done that. It hasn't gone to a lower low for quite a while since back here. That was the last lower low it, it hit. Um, so it's kind of right in the middle of that range, but this is something to keep an eye on. If it, if it starts to work its way back down and, and finally goes to a lower low, then it could be that, that bonds are dropping and those yields are going higher and that we could see this, this start to uh, head lower again. If we look at a bigger picture of what's going on, or what could be going on, I've talked about this a number of times, but sometimes it's a little bit easier to see it uh, when you back out a little bit. The one of the things that, that's possible that's going on here, it's possible that we bottom down and we're starting a new uptrend and we're just going to keep stair stepping up and and move all the way back up. But the other possibility is that, that this is the start of the downtrend right here, and then this is wave A, wave B, wave C, a bearish ABC pattern. So this is just a correction of that downtrend, and then we're going to have another impulsive move down. We're going to start to move lower again. 
Um, now I don't know what's. I have no idea if it's going to if it's moving higher or going lower. If you go out out there for all the reasons, one of the reasons why I like to be a technical trader is that I, especially if it's something I don't understand a lot about. Um, I'm not a big bond. I don't trade bonds, so I don't I don't know all the nuances of of uh, bond movement. Um, and so I could just focus on the chart. What is let the professionals figure all that out? They're going to trade based on their analysis. They're, if they think that that yields are 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 going to go lower and the bonds are going to go higher, then that this trend is going to continue to go up. Um, now, how do I know when that could shift and and maybe their activity is shifting? Well, again, I'm going to keep an eye on these key spots. Uh, that would that would in, that that's just the most basic way to analyze the trend there. If it um, if it breaks to a lower low. It increases the probability that um, that that those bond yields are going higher and that bonds are and the bonds themselves are going lower, and um, and that this this downtrend would continue. Okay. Um, now, if if you think that that the bond yields are going to go higher and that then the TLT is going to go down, and and you want to trade something like that. This is a tradable instrument. The problem here is that we're ex you'd be expecting in that scenario you'd be expecting things just to be going down. You can be sh you can short the TLT. If you don't like to short uh, stocks, um, there there is a an inverse ETF to the TLT called the TBS. Type that in here. It's it's the inverse. It, it it'll in other words if 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 bonds go down, uh, this goes up. If the 20 year bond goes down, this will go up. So, in other words, it, it's just the opposite. But what it allows you to do is the TBF. You see, if you look at the long term chart of this, you know, this, this actually, this is a reason why I think that the bonds could continue to drop is when you look at the inverse of it, this is a very bullish pattern where um, here's your kind of bull shaped chart that we like to see and this would be a bullish abc pattern expecting that this is going to go higher and so this is just the flip-flop of of what we're looking at with the tlt type that up here again real quick where you had this move down and this looks like a bearish abc pattern for move lower so but this you could you could go long the TBS and that way you're not shorting you're not if you don't like to short things you can you can just you can buy the the TBF and then as the TLT goes down this would this would move up But there again, I mean, you could and you could wait for confirmation too, and something like this, where you know, here is the last lower high right here. This is a lower low, We're kind of in the middle right there. You could wait for it to get above here as confirmation that that trend is starting to move back up again. Anyway, just an idea. You know, with a lot of these things, there's ways to trade. You, know, you could trade the SPY. Uh, you can trade the the DIA, so you can trade the whole index. You can trade the whole S and P 500 index. There are inverse um, ETFs where if you think the S and P 500 is going to go down uh, over the next few months, um, and you don't want to short it um, or short the market, you can buy uh, inverse ETFs that that actually go up when the, the market goes down. Things like that. All right. Um, Gold, I guess speed things up a little bit. Gold, uh, we talked about this before, how it was trending down and it had this impulsive move down. This was corrected, then it had this little impulsive move down, then had an impulsive move up. And since then, it's been moving a little bit more sideways. So the expectation here is that it's acting like it's in a in a trend reversal right now. At least early stages, it's acting that way. Um, we'll see if uh, if it uh, if it has another impulsive move up, it'll be confirming that. Um, and that could that could be tied to this week. Uh, you know, we are uh, uh, Chairman Fed Chairman Powell is going before Congress this week, and um, we could have um, uh, some something that moves or, or 
learn a little bit more about the inflation environment. And uh, obviously, with higher inflation, gold tends to go up in an inflationary environment, typically. So this could be acting like it's in that early stage of, of uh, uh, reversing back into that uptrend. We'll keep, like I said, we'll keep an eye on that, and that could change. But that, that's that behavior right now is is it uh, it had this it had this impulsive move down. This was corrective. This was a real sharp. But it was an impulsive move down right there on that gap down, and then it's reversed that. It's gone to a higher high right here, and then it's been moving more sideways. Remember, stocks tend to alternate between impulsive and corrective as they stair step, and so the expectation is is that this is is going to go higher in the near term. We'll see if that plays out. Oil uh, had this little just brief sell off right here, then it's right back to moving higher. It could also stay in the sideways range where maybe it's back and forth a little bit. Um, if it doesn't break out, it moves, starts to move back down. We'll keep an eye on this range here to see if it uh, if it stays within that range. Now, whenever you have a pullback like that again, you, and it starts to move up like that, you're gonna you're gonna mark that low and this high. A breakout above here is bullish. A break down below here is bearish. And um, we'll keep an eye on that next week. See uh, see where that is breaking out or which way it goes. But so far, it, it still looks like the uptrend is still intact. I don't see anything there that would cause me to believe that uh, it's in a trend reversal. The dollar um, started to move lower last week, had a big move up today. Again, you know, here's your higher low, higher high. Um, that's going to be a key area right here. This is going to be a key area right here. If we break out above here, it's bullish. If we break down below there, that's bearish. It hasn't had a, a broken to a lower low in quite a while. So if it does break uh, to a lower low, that would be a, a that would be pretty significant that and tell us that maybe the dollar is, is reversing into a downtrend. As of right now, it's still acting like an uptrend. So we're going to assume it's going to keep moving higher until it shows us that it's uh, possibly reversing. And then lastly, the VIX. Um, one thing to keep it out of the VIX, the VIX is all the VIX is really, remember I, I, when I talked about the VIX and when I mentioned the VIX, I, I tell you that it doesn't always tell you something, okay? Um, if, you, if you're if you expecting the VIX to tell you something every day, it's not. Um, what you want to, uh, to look for are, are things that are unusual or things, you know, if the, usually it's going to move inversely to the market. So if the market goes up, the VIX is usually going to go down. If the market goes down, usually the VIX is going to go up. Uh, if the market goes up or the VIX goes up, that's something they pay attention because it's telling you that the, the professional traders don't trust the rally, that they're buying puts or protective puts. If the market goes down or the VIX goes down, it tells you that don't uh, you know don't worry about the the traders aren't worried about the drop, meaning that they're probably near a bottom, and uh, it's a good time to start buying when that, that you see that happen. But there are also some other subtle things. And one thing I've, I've kind of, that we want to start to keep an eye on is notice on some of these sell-offs here, what's happened is, is we've had these little spikes in the VIX that we continue to move lower, but each of these spikes have been lower highs. Even this last one right here is a lower high. But we're getting, and now we're starting to kind of flatten out down here. We're getting a little bit of a triangle formation right here. So what we want to keep an eye on is, is it, in the next sell-off, do we spike to a higher high? If that happens, I think that'll be another confirming signal that we're at a top or very near a top. Doesn't mean it can't, the VIX can't come back down, the market couldn't rally to a new all-time high. But I think that's going to be an early signal that we're close to a top is when we see that VIX spike up to a higher high. And, you know, I think we're getting to a point where the next sell-off is, is probably going to spike us to a higher high. It may not be the, the start of the bigger correction, but it'll be probably that early warning sign that, um, that those professional traders are starting to be a little bit more concerned and they're starting to hedge a little bit more. Okay. All right. Um, question if if inflation heats up and the tbt tbf will go up uh yeah yeah because if if inflation goes as higher that what's going to happen is rates are going to be the rates are going to go up which is those bond yields that you're looking at uh those are going to go higher and that 
that uh, is is uh, uh, that is bearish for bonds. So the TLT would go down, but the TBF, which is the opposite of that, would go up. Um, yeah. So uh, hopefully that answers your question there. But yeah, um, so if you're expecting inflation is going to heat up, those bond yields should go higher. Bonds themselves go would go down, trend lower, and um, and uh, that would uh, cause the TBF to go up. Yep. All right, uh, let's look at a couple of stocks here real quick, and then I do have a training I want to get get into. Um, not, again, we're we're seeing some of the same stocks, and um, again, a lot of that has to do with that market breadth. There's when the market breadth is really strong, um, and we do these these um, we look at these individual stocks. Usually, you're seeing new ones all the time because there's so many of them that are participating, or you're seeing a lot of different ones that are in that 90 near that 98 strength rank, um, have have good uptrends and things like that. So, the fact that we keep kind of cycling through some of the same stocks is is part of that problem. Is it? Um, it's part of that breadth problem. Okay, uh, under computer and technology. I, I still like this uh, Global Star GSAT. Um, well, let's switch this over to signals. You got higher highs, higher lows through here. It's kind of pulled back. It looks like a little bit of an ABC pattern, pulse to move up. It's down a little bit today. Um, and so you'd want to keep an eye on on this low right here. You don't really want it to go below that low, although because it's just kind of moving up a little bit, it hasn't really got started yet. It, it's possible it could reverse and, and go to a lower low and still end up taking off again. See, you know, this had a little bit of a drop right here. It, it rallied up and then kind of came back down again. Um, if it starts to, you know, you've got kind of this trend line right here. If they start to dip down below, if you break below that low and you start to get real close to this low right here, it could be that this is just a correction from another move down, although it's a dollar stock. There's not much downside, more downside this thing could have. Um, but, uh, and you're waiting for confirmation anyway for it to go back to a, a buy signal. And so, um, and it's probably getting pretty close. Yeah, you can see you're probably another day or so of moving up would, would put it right into that. That buy range there. And again, I like the kind of that bowl shaped look to it. Looks like it's reversing from that downtrend into an uptrend. Um, another one in, in the if you if you go under computer technology under the buy section, there's one that has recently gone uh, to a buy HIMX. It's a 94 strength rank, but again, I like I like the behavior here. It uh, you know it it was it had lower highs, lower lows through here. It's part of that correction, and it broke out to a higher high, pulled back, had a higher low. Went to a higher high, pull back, went back to a hold signal just recently last week. Seems to be a higher low. Uh, it's down a little bit today, but uh, it's, it went back to that buy signal yesterday. So it's still kind of early in that, um, has gone back to, got, have, having gone back to that buy signal, but it's acting like an uptrend. What would cause me to believe it's no longer acting like an uptrend? Well, if it, if it went to a lower, low or even down to this low right here you can give a little bit more room that would probably cause me to believe that maybe maybe that uptrend isn't going to be underway and that's going to be important as, as we get into the topic for today because we're going to talk about risk management and um, how to how to kind of manage your risk within your trades what the, what are the things you can do to to um, to what what are things you can control within the trade is what we're going to talk about uh, in our training today. All right, let's do uh, let's do one more. Uh, let's look at 
your business services. I like these two at the top of the list, uh, uh, Marathon Digital, M-A-R-A, and, and Riot Blockchain, R-I-O-T. They're tied to the Bitcoin um, craze, and, and um, so they're going to move with how Bitcoin moves. But now these are kind of in a critical area here. Uh, we've had the big sell-off on in Bitcoin. We had a big sell-off on these stocks. We're getting this kind of subtle higher high, higher low right through here. We've had a little bit of a deep pullback right here, but we're still holding. We're still at a higher low. Again, I want this to go back to a buy signal as confirmation. And if it can go back to a buy signal from here, it, it, I think it could keep acting like an uptrend, keep pushing to that higher high, higher and have those higher lows. If it dips down below here, I'd probably steer, stay clear of it for a little while. Um, so this is kind of in that critical spot right now. And, it, and if it keeps dropping up, maybe off our radar by next or later this week or even next week. Um, but that's one to kind of keep an eye on. And Riot was the other one that's it'll look about the same because they, they do about the same thing. Um, Yeah, and you can see it's right at the same spot. And that one just barely went back to, the, both these actually barely went back to the hold signal there. All right. Uh, let's get into the trading for today. And the, like I said, the trading is going to be on risk management. Um, so when we're deciding to get in the trade, we're, we're going to, we're obviously there's an uh, entry price. We take a look at, uh, let's go back to GSAT. Actually, let's go to HIMX. So this, cause this is already at a buy signal. So let's say I'm going to get into the trade. The, the current price is $15 and 34 cents. So I know what my entry price would be. And a lot of a lot of traders, when they first get started, that's all they focus on is okay, the entry price is what I'm getting in at, and then it goes up, and I'll get out and make my thousands of dollars, right? Uh, you don't you don't think that it's going to go down. And remember, that's an important thing to keep in mind. I talked about this when I was talking about trading psychology, and but it's important that every trader recognize this within themselves that every trade that you get into you believe is going to work out or you would never get into the trade. Are you ever going to get in trade? If I told you to get in the stock at $15.34, I guarantee you it's going to go down to $10 over the next two weeks. Are you going to buy that stock right now? No. Why would you ever buy something you think is going to go down and value or go against you? Um, you're not. You're going to buy this stock at fifteen dollars and thirty-four cents because you believe it's going to go up. It's it's going to it's going to work out. The trade is going to work out. So the, that's always important to understand because I don't care how long you've been trading, whether you're a beginner or you're you've been trading for thirty years. I've been trading for over twenty years. Every trade I get into, I believe is going to work out, or I don't get into that trade. But what the, the 20 years of experience has taught me is that not every trade works out. So I have to recognize the reality that not every trade is going to work out. And I better plan for that. I better have a, a, a plan in place. Yes, I believe the stock is going to go up, go up, but what if it doesn't? And that is the essence of your risk management. You have to manage your trade. In fact, this is the, this is the area that's most important in, in your success. Yeah, everyone thinks that picking the right stocks is the most important thing. No, it isn't. It's the it's down the list. Managing your risk, your trade management, your money management are the most important in your success as a trader. So how do we do that? Well, there's really only two things you can control in your risk management. You can tr control your position size, how many shares you're going to buy. And you can control your stop loss. 
where are you planning on stopping out? Even the stop loss is a little iffy because it, you could have a plan for your stop loss and that stock could gap down below that that price. You know, so but you know it is something that you could at least put in place that you're trying to control is that is that stop. Um, I can't control where the stock ultimately goes goes higher or what it does um, day to day. Um, so how do we do that? Well, and by the way, you don't always have to have a stop. Um, you could go into trades um, without a stop loss, but if you're going to do that, then you really have to you have to make sure you're you got a correct position size uh, based on your um, what you're allowing yourself to risk in the trade. Now, I'm not telling you what to risk in a trade. I, I want to make that very clear. Um, Legally, I can't tell you what to risk in a trade, um, but there's also not a perfect amount of risk in a trade. Okay, you can you can you know there's there's different levels that you can adjust and move towards, and and you know you hear me talk about sometimes where I, lately I've been talking about market conditions that the market conditions we're in right now are not ideal. There, there's a lower probability that your your trades are going to work out in these kind of these conditions because the market just isn't moving in a very predictable way right now now that'll change but when i'm in these types of conditions i don't i don't risk a lot i don't trade a lot um when i'm in a very strong market that has a very high probability of, of moving higher i like to be more aggressive uh, and i like to risk more in those environments okay now i've got a lot of experience in in reading price action reading charts recognizing clues that can tell me when I'm in those stronger trading environments, when I'm not, I still can't know exactly what the market's going to do. Don't let me, I'm not trying to say that I know exactly when and how long we're going to stay in strong trading environments or how long we're going to be in weak trading environments. But the point I'm making is that because I can recognize that stuff, I can, I can adjust my risk accordingly. I can take strong, higher risk in a, in a stronger condition. I can take smaller risk in a, weaker condition. If you can't do that yet, and I would assume that some of you are in the class because you're trying to learn how to recognize these things and learn these things, and you don't, you're not there yet, then pick a small amount and then work on increasing it or decreasing it accordingly. Now, a lot of, a good starting point is to, is to start with around a one to one and a half percent risk per trade. What does that mean? That's what you're assuming you would lose if you're wrong. Uh, if you don't want to use a stop loss, then that would mean uh, the amount, the total amount you're going to the trade with, you could you could lose that. To, you're assuming you could lose that total amount, um, and you're willing to to lose that total amount. That's another part of this too. Is you can calculate um, uh, your risk, but you've also got to be willing to risk that. Now we'll see that here in in, in the in the calculator. Uh, so you can kind of, uh, you know, see what the, 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 the numbers would suggest you could risk for the trade, but also the dollar amount. And are you really prepared to, to lose $3,000 on a trade or something like that if you're wrong? Um, you, might, you might need to lower your risk if that's the case. So maybe that risk is still a little bit high. Now, I'm going to be basing this off of just a general $100,000 portfolio. Some of you are going to have portfolio is bigger than that so you're going to have them smaller than that and you'd have to you'd have to adjust and make these decisions accordingly but um, at least I want to teach you the concepts so let's say we're getting into HM, HIMX right now and we're going to be spending you know fifteen dollars and thirty four cents to get in um, I need to know am I going to use a stop loss um, well, I could have a really tight stop and just put it at a lower, if it goes to a lower low right here, I'm going to get out. Um, the benefit of that would be that if it goes straight up from here, I, I, I could, I could, I have very little risk, so I could buy a lot of shares. But if it doesn't, what if it comes back down here, just barely goes a little bit lower and then takes off again? I can get bounced out of the trade and I miss the move. So, you know, I, I might want to widen my stop a little bit to where 
I have a little bit of room for it to go back and forth. Um, so maybe you pick this right here because you say, boy, if it went below that low and this low, now you're, it looks like you're reversing trend. You know, you're um, you're you're now gone to two lower lower lows at that point. And that, that's, that'd be kind of a reasonable stop. Or you could come all the way down here and say, boy, I'm really going to give that. I think this is the bottom of this. This was a large correction right here. I think this is a going higher. I'm willing to give it a lot of flexibility because maybe this is a this is the first part of that move. And this is wave A, wave B, wave C. And it does go down and, and kind of break that smaller higher high, higher low. This ends up being a little bit larger correction, but then it ultimately takes off again. It just depends on, and a lot of this can depend on your time horizon for your trade. Is it more of an investment? If it's more of an investment and you want to be in this thing for several years, you'll probably give it a wider stop if you want it. If, if I'm just trying to trade this thing to go to a higher high right here, I'm not looking to, um, I just want a short-term trade, then maybe I use a tighter stop, um, one of these tighter stops. Okay. There, there isn't a perfect way to do it is another way thing I can say. There's, I, I'm making adjustments like this all the time. And it, and it just depends on, you know, my confidence level in the trend, how much, how much um, flexibility I want to give it. It can't come down to how much risk I want to put into the trade. Because like I said, if I have that tighter stop, I can, I could buy more shares and still risk that smaller amount. And if I buy more shares and it does work out, I make more money. Um, you know, that that could be a reason why I would do that. But I'm going to put a stop down here below this low, this the second low. Um, so it's going to be right around um, $13, let's see, th about $13.25. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at, looking at this box right here. I'm looking at the close. And then put my mouse right at this low, right down in here. Actually, it closed that day at 13.24, but I'll, I'll just I'll say 13.25, or we could go a little bit little below that if we want, go 13.23 or whatever. 13.25 is kind of a round number, though. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that. All right, so. Uh, first thing you have to do is you have to kind of set up your your portfolio and you can go into my portfolio here and you can give it a name I gave it this one an, a name of example um, so let's go back here to HIMX HIMX and if you click on um, add to portfolio right here, this little blue I want to add this to my portfolio and it'll say well what portfolio do you want to add it to? We're going to add it to example And here's it pull, automatically pulls up the current value of that stock, which is at 1534. If I get in right now, it's at 1534. The stop price, I'm going to put in uh, $13.25. Now, again, I set this up on basically a hundred thousand dollar portfolio. Um, and so the, the amount, the percentage risk is going to be based off of that, that one, well, we want to be around one to one and a half percent, somewhere in that range. You do want to have a range. If you just say 1%, what if it's 1.1%, you still, is that still okay? Yeah, it's still okay. You're not going to match everything up to exactly to, you know, the, the percentage. So I like to use a little bit of a range. Um, and I do try to, 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 I do like to keep as close to round uh, lots as I can, 100 shares, 200 shares, 1,000 shares, you know, 
56 shares. If I have to, I'll do it, but I, I try to stick more to, I, I personally like to just have more round numbers with that. If, if it says I could risk, I could buy 56 shares, I'll probably just buy 55 uh, or 50 just to make it more of a round number. But that's just me. All right, so if you scroll down, Oh, we need, we need to, if you scroll down, it's going to, what we're looking at is this down here, portfolio percentage at risk. And we also want to pay attention to the dollar amount at risk. Now we haven't, we haven't put in our shares yet. All we put in is, is our entry and our stock. So this is something you have to kind of play around with a little bit. Um, I'm going to put in, uh, let's put in a thousand shares. What if I did a thousand shares? Well, if I get stopped out, I would actually have risked two percent, or I would have lost two percent of my portfolio, or two thousand and ninety dollars. I want to stick to. I want to be right around that one to one and a half percent. So, um, let's drop this down. Let's. Well, it should be pretty easy. Let's drop that down to five hundred shares. Let's go half of that. And there we are, perfect. We're at 1% risk, portfolio at risk. Only 1% of my portfolio is at risk. Like I said, you've got to pay attention to this right here. It means that if I get in this trade and it doesn't work out, I'm going to lose one, about $1,045. Are you okay with that? Now, this is a this is an area that I can't, I can't, um, I can't help you with this because everyone's different. You might say, well, just because you have a $100,000 account, that of course you'd be willing to risk $1,000. That's not a big deal to you, but that's not always the case. Um, I know people that are multimillionaires that if they lost $500, they're, they're, they've had a bad day. I mean, uh, it, it's it, you're, you, you, a lot of times you have to build up your, your risk tolerance. Um, and if that's too high, if, if boy, you know, maybe $500, but thousands too much, then you're going to have to lower, you're going to have to do 250 shares. And at 250 shares, you only have a half a percent risk, but you've got the dollar amount to where you're, you're okay. You, you can handle that. Okay. Um, now that seems like that's very, very low, but you know, that's, that's what you, that's what you're going to have to focus on. You're, you're going to have to start that way. Now you can, what, what happens a lot of times is when you start with the risk amount that you can handle, it's, it's very often it's going to be very low at first. And then as you get used to that, and more importantly, as you see that you're going to have winning trades and losing trades, you're going to have both. And hopefully your winning trades are making more money than your losing trades. Once you see that it, I'm not always just losing $500, but some, I'm going to have some trades where I make $1,000 or make $2,000, and you start to see that process, it, it helps you to increase that risk tolerance. It's easier to bump that up. But you got to start at a level that, where you're at. And this is an area that most people start trading. It, they, they have no idea about this, they, or they don't plan on this. Why? Well, because I think every trade they're getting into is going to work out. They're not going to have to worry about a $1,000 loss because it's not going to happen. It is going to happen, and so you've got to manage that. And like I said, maybe it means you're starting down with boring levels that aren't real exciting yet. Okay, that's where you should start, and then build it up from there. Okay. Um, and actually, that's a whole other training I could get into. Uh, get into, but um, so we're going to go with 500. That's going to be a thousand dollars dollar risk, one percent portfolio risk, portfolio risk. Okay. I'm going to have seven thousand six hundred seventy dollars in the trade. Okay. But I'm not, I'm not looking to risk that amount. Now let's say you have a stock that uh, is back is back and forth. It's really volatile, back and forth, up and down. But if you think you don't know when it's going to break out and go, but you think it's got the technology of the future, and it's going to you, you want to make sure you own this thing for ten years or whatever, because uh, it's going to be the next 
Tesla or the next uh, Apple or whatever. Well, maybe you decide that I, I don't want to have a stop loss because it's so back and forth. I don't want to get bounced out of the trade. Well, we could we could get in the stock and not have a stop loss. We can take out uh, our stop price of thirteen twenty five and put in zero. But that means that the total amount I'm putting in the trade seven thousand six hundred seventy dollars. I could I'm willing to lose that entire amount. That would be seven and a half percent of my portfolio. It's not a good idea to have that much of your portfolio at risk on a single trade. So maybe to, to get that down to that one and a half percent, we you know, we drop the shares down. At a hundred shares, I'm at it right at about a one and a half percent risk. But it also means I've got $1,500 in the trade, and if, 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 if this thing goes to zero, goes bankrupt, I only lose the $1,500. I don't lose any more than that. Now, this is rarely going to happen that you're you're going to get into trades with no stops. But if you if you if you if you don't want to mess around with stops, and you're taking a real long-term approach, and then you got to you get this is how you would manage that. Then. Make sure you're you're managing it correctly. So again, you're trying to control the things you control. Your position size uh, and your stop loss are really the only two things that you can control within, with, 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 as far as the outcome. And, um, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not making this as a recommendation that you have to risk 1% or 1.5%, but it's a good starting point to adjust from. Um, but like I said, make sure you factor in the dollar amount as well. Um, if, if, if it's still, if I had no stop and it's, and I'd, and I'd, I'd like to risk only one and a half percent of my portfolio, but I still, that, that would really ruin my day if I lost $1,500 on this trade. Maybe you're only buying 50 shares. And if you say, well, boy, that, why am I even doing this? I mean, I'm not going to make that much money if this thing takes off like I think it will. I, I want more shares. Okay, then then I want more shares. Then then you're you're going to have to put in a stop loss somewhere. Then you're going to have to adjust your your risk. You can't you can't have every everything. Um, you know, you're, you're going to have to adjust something here. Um, but what I'm trying to show you is that you can do it. And this is how you can do it. Now, let's go back to um, our 500 shares. Our stop price of um, what was thirteen twenty five. Now, if everything looks good, uh, let's go ahead and purchase and go to my portfolio. And it'll show up here. Now, I actually did one of these trades. I did a I, I did one a practice trade before class started. Just to have, and I actually, so it's now showing a thousand shares. I got, I bought. Uh, but let's do it. Let's do an example. Let's that's, let's do a new one here from from our. And, and the problem with some of these, we don't have our buy signal yet. This confirmation. But let's look at. Um, uh, actually, let's look at. There's another one here. I got to hurry. Sorry, I'm running a little bit late here. But let's go under industrial products. This is one we've talked about a little bit with Alcoa. Now it's still a hold signal. It's recently went to a sell signal, but I, li I do like this pattern. It, it looks like it's kind of forming inverse head and shoulders. Like I said, it's hard to do this because we don't have our buy signal yet, but let's assume I'm going to get it. Let's say I, I, I want to get in right now. I'm not going to wait for a buy signal. It's at uh, $35 and 58 cents right now let's say if this is an inverse head and shoulders pattern it shouldn't go below the bottom of the head right there so let's use that as a stop and that was at 32 dollars and eight cents we'll just say 32 dollars will be our stop 
let's add this to our port. Click on the number that says blue button right here to add to the portfolio. I'm going to add it to my example portfolio. Has already put in my entry or the current price. Let's put in our stop at 32. And then we need to play around with our shares here. Let's, uh, let's just put in 100 shares. What is that showing us? Way low here. How about 1,000 shares? That's 3%. Okay, let's do that's uh, still above 1.5%. So let's do 300 shares. We're right at 1% right there. This is what I was looking at when I was punching those numbers. I want to look at percentage of the portfolio at risk, keep it between that one to one and a half percent. If I get stopped out, I'm gonna lose $1,074. Make sure you're aware of that, and that's okay. The total amount I'm gonna have in the trade is $10,674. And then if that, all, that, all those numbers look good to you, you come down and you can purchase you can just purchase it. This will purchase it and then pull up the portfolio so you can see it in there. And if you and if you purchase it and they want to go to the portfolio later, you just go to click on the My Portfolio tab up here and it'll bring you to it. There it is right here. Now, um, What you could also do too is you could add alerts in there. Now I already have my stop, and I already know where I want to stop out. But maybe, uh, maybe I want to if this maybe I want it to just kind of warn me if this if this goes back to a sell signal or if it goes from buy to a hold, you might want to be aware of that so you can just check out the trade and look at it again later on. Or maybe down the road you want to adjust that stop, move that stop up a little bit, um, kind of use a little bit of a trailing stop and adjust it, you know, so you lock, you make sure you're keeping your profits that you've already gained down the road. But you can set up an alert here. I can tell, you know, I can have it tell me when it goes from, from buy to, uh, or from hold to sell. And they'll email me. I'm not going to do that here because I don't want to get a bunch of emails, but, um, you know, you, you can do that as well. All right. Sorry we ran a little bit late today. Um, have a great week. We'll see you on Thursday for the stock specific class. Bye now.